Hey, it's the Tim Anderson Podcast. Welcome. Good to have you here. Uh, I'm Tim, and that is the coach, my friend, my pal, uh, Zach, knee neighbor. Hello, Zach. How are you? Good, Tim. How are you doing? Living the dream. Obviously, you and I getting ready to head back to the A job. Uh, it is fall, uh, which means football season. And so we thought we'd keep rolling the train here and, and have another edition of Waxing on Wax where we open some old school football. But not, I mean, it's it doesn't feel like old school, but yet it's 20 years old. Yeah, 20 years old here. We got some Fleer Maximum uh, from 2002. I'm surprised you agreed to open these seeing as your Patriots missed the playoffs that year. But Now, is, um, it, is it 2002 from the 2001 season? Because if that's the case, then the Patriots won the Super Bowl. Uh, I, I guess I'm not 100% sure when Fleer Maximum actually released. I'm guessing it released closer to the season itself. So Yeah, the, Tom, uh, they, let's be clear, though. They uh, missed the playoffs, I think, going 9-7. and seven. They, they didn't have like yeah. a 5-10 and 10 yeah. season or anything, or 5-11 yeah. and 11 season. They played good football. Yeah. They just didn't. It, it was like a three-way tie, wasn't it? I think so. And I think the they Jets. were just, they were just, it was fresh. It was, they weren't ready to handle the success yet. Tom wasn't ready yet. The Jets, Patriots, and Dolphins were all nine and seven, and the Bills were eight and eight. So yeah. the whole division was close. Um, and nine and seven did get the Browns in the playoffs as a wild card, um, mm. but they had the tiebreaker over uh, your squad. I do I'm believe. Not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, then, because isn't that the year of the playoff game against Pittsburgh? The classic in the snow. Was it Kelly Holcomb v? Tommy Maddox or whatever it was in the Gross. uh, uh Gross. <laughs> but is that is that the one? Is that Butch Davis? Uh, I think so, right? It was in it was in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Um when 36-33 final. Yeah, that sounds right. Ugh, the the gross. vaunted the vaunted Tommy Maddox v Kelly Holcomb battle. Or maybe it was Tim Couch. Was Couch Couch was there, but I wonder if Holcomb played that day. I think that might have been a Holcomb game. Uh, well, we, let's get into these cards let's, here. Yeah, um, you don't even want to talk about a Browns playoff game. Come on, I don't blame <laughs> you for that either. <laughs> I I don't even remember many Browns playoff games. I'm sure Bo- Bernie Kozar would, would love to talk to you about some of those games. If, if you want to get Bernie Kozar on the pod, we can chat with him. I'd love to chat with Bernie Kozar. The problem is he may, and he, I could always tell him that it's a big pod and he'd probably listen. Ooh, what a card off the top. What a pull to start. Drew Brees in the Chargers uniform. Wow. So now these have bricked up a little bit, so we'll have to try to kind of perform some surgery here as we pull them apart. Yeah, be gentle. Thomas Jones, very talented back. I think we're going to go every other on these, I guess. Okay. Dominic, Dominic Rhodes. Rhodes. Yeah, very solid little player. This is one of my guy Bob's favorite players, Nate Jicky Jacket, right there. That is uh, – Could we get Ryan on to talk for four hours about him? I don't know. <laughs> He probably could. Jake Plummer. Jake Plummer. Jake Plummer right there. Very nice. All right. So we actually have a numbered card here. Ooh, this is Maurice this is, Morris. Maurice Morris. Oh, the running back, right? Yep. Yep. Let's see if we can not rip yeah. it apart here. Yeah, as be we... very careful with this one. This one's here. really ripped up to the one behind it. Yeah. All right. For the card, um, for the card people out there, when a uh, for the non-card people, when you get a brick pack, what is happening? What has happened to that pack that made it brick up? Um, usually it's ones that ha- are a glossy finish and, um, I think it has to do with moist humidity and making it happen. So there you go. The Quadri missile, Ishmael? the missile, the missile. Yes. The missile. Not to be confused with the rocket. Not to be confused. Certainly not. <laughs> Benjamin Gay. Mark Brunel. Okay. Okay. Big Mark Brunel guy growing up. I really liked Mark Brunel. Scott Covington. <laughs> and I, I don't even think this is like an official card, but it's like a checklist Ooh, that's in the Yeah, checklist. In Love the box. those. All right. All right. So um, a, a questionable pack, but I think we got to start with Drew Brees. Have to in this Charger uniform. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember this very well because Drew Brees played for Purdue and – I mean, I was explaining this to Ryan, I think, uh, a, a couple months back where I was talking about uh, what he did to the Gophers uh, for four years here or whatever. He had three games against the Gophers. I think one game 
was here, right? And I want to say he threw for a just lot, a bazillion, a yards. bazillion yeah. yards. Yeah. Just uh, like he was unstoppable, and our defense offered no resistance to to what he could do. And I think there were people who believed that yes, he was short, but that he could be an NFL style quarterback because they played that kind of pro style at Purdue, and it looked like he was comfortable and. Uh, ended up being what the first pick of round two of that year's draft. Well, so I, you know, I had a kind of like a collage of the pictures from newspapers and magazines and stuff on like my closet doors, and so I had a Drew Brees in his Boilermakers uniform and stuff on my closet as a kid. I do remember that, um, cause, and it was mostly from that, right? Like he just lit up the Gophers. Yes. Right. He, he dominated. And so this is just after his rookie year, right? And he just played in the one game. Sorry, we can't see if I can get the, there we go. Right. So he played in one game and was 15 for 27 uh, the year before. Right. The real story with Drew Brees is his shoulder injury and the decisions that were made when he left. Right. Because, he went to tried to go to Miami and New Orleans. And now he is a New Orleans icon. And what would have really happened had he have gone right had he had gone to Miami? He ended up with the perfect place, the perfect marriage. You know, the Saints before Drew Brees got there, I mean they were a mess, right? They had they had gone through all these different coaches. They had gone through different quarterbacks, right? We went through the Mike Ditka, Ricky Williams era. We went, we were going through a Jim Hazlitt, Aaron Brooks era. And it was like the perfect marriage of Sean Payton and Drew Brees. I wonder if Drew Brees would have been the player he was without Sean Payton. I also wonder if Sean Payton would be the coach he is without Drew Brees. It's that, you know, we talked about it with Brady and Belichick, those perfect marriages when they work, you know, who who gets the credit, who doesn't, I don't know, but Clearly, this was the perfect marriage for Sean Payton and Drew Brees. Well, and he, I, sorry, it, it could have been a perfect marriage in Miami too. Yeah, that's true because Payton was right? being rumored he, there too, right? Well, but it was also at the time, right? Wasn't it was Nick Saban? Yeah, Saban. That's true. Yeah. So, right. I mean, that's I think the big web that we got to talk about, right? Because if Saban gets Drew Brees and not Dante Culpepper and not an injured Dante Culpepper. Is Saban an NFL coach for the next 10, 15 years? It's a great Does question. Saban, I mean, Saban could have stuck around for 15 years with Drew Brees like like Peyton did with Drew Brees in New Orleans. I mean, it could really right redo everything we know about college football. 100%. Because remember where Alabama was before Saban took the job. Like yeah, they were Alabama was nothing at the time. Nothing. There were Mike Shula and DeBose. They had right. gone through like nine different guys. Um it, it had not been it, it wasn't the program that it is now. And it's it's all yeah, he I mean I remember Saban bolting after two years in Miami. I think he saw the writing on the wall very quickly, like I don't have a quarterback, can't win without one. You know, I'm not gonna try to play with Jay Fiedler. Uh I'm out of here. I'm going, give me give me a good college job. Pay me some money. Which you saw, I mean, Bobby Petrino saw that move a full year and change earlier when he was in Atlanta. <laughs> you know, or a year year or two later when he's in my when he's in Atlanta, he's like, Oh, I don't have Michael Vick anymore. That stinks. Well, I ain't waiting around. Get me out of here right away. And of course Bobby Petrino's a horrible guy. But but yes, it's well, very interesting. You're right, the tangled web is interesting there. And it also wonder about Philip Rivers. There's your dogs barking. Two episodes in a row. I love it. It's so good when we can get your dogs making an appearance on the podcast. It's always good. I also wonder about Philip Rivers. If he doesn't injure his shoulder, are they I mean, I they had drafted Rivers prior to this, right? I'm guessing. Or did they remind me of the timing on Rivers? Rivers is later, right? Because Aren't they still playing together though when they draft Rivers? Like, isn't Breeze still on the roster when they draft Philip Rivers? Uh let me pull it up here and just Let's let's make sure we because I felt like that was a conversation piece. Like that was a no rivers. Rivers is two thousand four, and yeah, what isn't what's Breeze's first year in New Orleans? I think it's like 06. It's after Hurricane Katrina. Oh, yeah, okay, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, because he was drafted 
and then but remember too right the the he came in and Rivers reported late in 04. Right. Right. He went through a long contract thing. Drew Brees was the starter and Doug Flutie was the backup. Oh, wow. That's right. Right. Um, and then, and so they actually messed around with some Doug Flutie, didn't they? That year too? I think they did. I think you're right. <laughs> yes. You know, yes. And not Rivers. And then eventually Goat went to Rivers. So, um, and and that's a the when we can get down a rabbit hole here of Philip Rivers because that was the Eli Manning draft yep. where Eli said he wouldn't go there, um, and they really like shuffled up the draft because of it. So I you know I'm I'm a Drew Brees fan yeah but um I think that the Chargers also made the decision that they needed to act. That's true. And I guess the Drew Brees thing gives you hope for a guy who didn't make it work with their first team, right? Like, it didn't work out for, say, Baker Mayfield. I'm not saying Baker Mayfield's Drew Brees. I'm not saying that. Um, but it does give you hope to, like, hey, just because it didn't work on this first stop, this is why teams don't throw in the towel on dudes. Like, they think, well, maybe I can fix him. Maybe I've got the next Drew Brees. Maybe I'm not saying Pittsburgh's even saying that about Mitch Trubisky. But... Because I think Kenny Pickett might win the job. But I'm just saying that's why you don't give up, right? Because these guys may turn out to be difference makers down the road in their next team, their next contract, whatever. <laughs> uh, sorry, it's just been cats here. We had a, <laughs> a package dropped off. Boys, the dogs are not big fans of uh, Amazon. They're not big fans of the podcast either. Or, uh, you know, it's just a lot going on there with the dogs. So, uh, Jake Plummer. Yes. Um, it, the word on the street is he's a bit reclusive right now, isn't it? Like, isn't that the word on the street that he's kind of got the long hair, hippie, holistic, you know, embracing his inner city. Right. He kind of had a, a career resurgence when he went to Denver. Yeah. Right. Struggled in Arizona. And then the first, right. In 03, he goes to Denver and I think he goes like nine and two, and then they're ten and six, and then they're thirteen and three. Like he, he had some really good seasons after he left Arizona. Um, but what do you what do you remember most of Jake Plummer? I think I do remember the I I think because they they lost to the Vikings in ninety eight in the playoffs round two because they I remember Jake pulls a stunning upset against Dallas in round one. And it's kind of it, right? That's the end of the line for the Dallas Cowboys. The Aikman, uh, Emmitt Smith, like Jake Plummer kind of, it's not a great game. It's not a great football game. Nobody plays real well. But like Jake Plummer's the guy that I always associate with sort of the death of Dallas, like the death of that, that triplets run because he goes into Dallas, wins, and we take care of him the next, Minnesota takes care of him the next week in the NFC Divisional Playoffs. But it was like, Jake Plummer might be good. Like, Arizona stinks, and Jake Plummer just took him to the playoffs and won a playoff game, like, in his second game or second year as a yeah. quarterback. And that's says a lot. But I also – it speaks to, like, just because you have the look and just because you have all the makeup and all the skills. And by all accounts, he was, right? He was big. He was prototypical, great quarterback. And he had a good career, as you mentioned. But did he – did he never – the hype was too great. The hype train – too much, and I he just got swallowed in it, which, you know, happens to a lot of dudes, but happened to him, I think, more than anything. And he had some tough years, too, right? I mean, yeah. he, he led the NFL in interceptions a couple of times. I think he led the NFL in sacks a couple of years, and too. And he had some poorly coached. I mean, he had, God, he had some bad coaches. I mean, just some really huh. bad, like the Bidwells who don't spend any money. Uh, you know, or at least they didn't spend money for a long time. He's playing outside at Sun Devil Stadium. Where he played college football, I get it, but man, in the pros under that heat, I mean, you're playing in a hundred degree weather in September. I mean, that absolutely blows. At least with Arizona State, you could play at night. All right, let's crack open this next one here. All right, we can we can maybe touch on some Mark Brunel depending on what we get in this. Pack. Yeah, we may have, we'll, we'll keep Brunel on the back burner there if we need to, because isn't he the isn't he a coach on the Packers? Uh, well, man, I, he is. There, I think there's so much more to talk about than that. But. Oh, I, I figured that would be the only thing you'd want to talk about. Oh. Speaking of, look at that! 
So this this whole this whole one is pretty bricked together. Yeah. All right. So we got Doug, Doug Flutie. Flutie. All right. I love it. Eric Metcalf still still in the league. Yeah, still in the league. Eric Metcalf. Wow. Chris Wanky. Uh, Minnesota goal, Minnesota right? Heisman Trophy winner. Jeff Ogden. Who? Yeah. <laughs> It's never good when your position on the card is kick returner. Yeah, it's not good. Right? I mean, how many guys can you name that were primarily kick returners, right? There's only a couple. Mel Gray, Devin Hester, Dante Hall. That's the list. Ooh. Brian Erlacher. Yes. Who said recently he can't wait for Trump to get back in office so that he can get everything back on track. Seems pretty sensible. <laughs> Seems like a sensible thinker. You're just trying to get Ryan to call. I got to get show. Ryan to call the podcast here at some point. Yes, Mark Edward. A lot of fullbacks in this pack. Fullbacks and kick returners in this pack. Remember when fullbacks were a thing? Oh God, I miss them. Here we go. Peyton Manning. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Huge. And Jermaine Lewis. Kick returner. Kick return. Three <laughs> kick returners. Two fullbacks. Doug Flutie and Peyton Manning. What a pack. What a pack. All right, and, and with all of that, I think we need to st- start at quarterback with, with Chris, Chris Winkie. Winkie. <laughs> <laughs> well, he dominates in college because he's nine years older than everybody else. Yeah, I mean, right. he, he's, so, he's in his late twenties when he's drafted. For for those unfamiliar with his story, you want you want to tell it? Oh, you you go ahead and tell it. Fill everybody in. Okay, so. Um, Chris Winkie is actually from around here, right? He went to um, went to high school at private school, right? Same kind of. He, there were rumors. Yeah, I'm, getting, I'm jumping all over the place. There were rumors that Joe Mauer might kind of be the same type of guy, following his footsteps, right? Yep. Because great baseball player, <laughs> um, gets drafted and goes to the Blue Jays minor league system for six years, uh, leaves baseball, enrolls at Florida State at the age of 25, right? And he wins, right? Doesn't he win the Heisman there? Yeah, I think he does. Wins the Heisman. And, and I'll, yeah. I'll then rem- makes the cover of the game too, by the way. Like he's on yeah. the cover of the NCAA football game. Yeah. Um, And... Then goes to the NFL briefly and, you know, kind of flames out. But now he's like a quarterback whisperer, right? Like he's a coach. Like he's a guy that, like he has his own camp. I think guys go to him. I think I read that, that he's like one of those co- that QB clinic guys, like a big, he runs big camps and, or he goes to big camps and he's like a coach now of the quarterback position for up and right. coming and, like high school and college kids. And, if you remember, he was recruited to Florida State the same year that Charlie Ward went there. God Charlie really. Ward Charlie Ward also won a Heisman at That's quarterback right. and then became the best quarterback in New York while he was playing point guard for the Knicks. <laughs> My favorite Chris Winkie moment then is, so he gets drafted fourth, fifth round by Carolina. First game, he wins the starting job in Carolina because it's a bad Carolina team. Like, I think it's George Seifert coaching him. And George Seifert, we find out without Steve Young, has no fastball. Like, doesn't know how to coach. Not a good coach. But they go to play in Minnesota first game of the season. And we can't stop them. Like, we don't have any answers. And Chris Winkie's running up and down the field on us. And Carolina kicks our ass. It's partly because Steve Smith, another rookie, I think, that year absolutely destroys us at the Metrodome as well. Steve Smith tended to destroy us often. It, uh, but that was the big is, one. Is this the year that Steve Smith rode the boat? No, that's 04 because that's right that's on – that's, yeah. that's or, oh, yeah, it's the fall of 04, sex boat scandal. We have yeah, to play the them boat. two weeks later or a week later, and Steve yeah. Smith is just rubbing our that's nose right. in it. That's, that's the right. game Dante goes down, that Carolina yep. game, and that's it. And then season's over. Tice loses his job at the end of the season. We're dead. All right, so enough enough Chris Winky talk for the day. I <laughs> do. You, do you want Peyton Manning, Doug Flutie, or Brian Urlacher? Last thought on on the Chris Winky thing, only because I want to say it from this perspective: Will Florida State ever return 
to being like quarterback you. They had Charlie Ward. They had Chris Winkie, Jameis Winston. Will they ever get back to national prominence? Um, or are they like Miami right now, where Miami's just kind of – they're gone. Like their best years are behind them. Well, I think that I think that Miami is ahead of Florida State right now. I'll say that. I think that I think that Florida State though will always kind of be. Um, they might pop up every once in a while, but I don't think they're going to be a national power anymore. Switching conferences for them will be the death nail too. Yeah, if they have to go play SEC, you know, an SEC schedule, something like that, forget yeah. it. Forget it. Yeah, they're going to go yeah, five and seven sure. a lot. We'll go wherever you want. What do you want to talk next? I, lo- I like that, but I, I just wanted to throw that last one out. All right, Doug Flutie. Let's have some Flutie flakes. Uh, favorite Doug Flutie moment? How about the fact that he was number 22 as quarterback in college? I was going to say, it has to be the catch, right? Doesn't it have to be the the Hail Mary the, you know, the, with, with Phelan for Boston College? Yep. I mean, it has to be that. Although... I does, it, does it have to be the the fact that they actually thought Rob Johnson in Buffalo was better than him? Could it be that? Like, that's interesting that there are people in Buffalo that actually thought Rob Johnson's the guy that should replace Jim Kelly and take us to the next place and not Doug Flutie. I mean, was Flutie ever good, though? I... He wasn't great, but Rob Johnson wasn't good at all. Is he, is he still the last? Is Flutie still the last guy to kick a successful drop kick? I think he- Right? Didn't he do that yeah, while he was yeah, with New England? I think, yeah. I think your Patriots. I remember them lining up for that, and people were just baffled. <laughs> like, what, what are they doing? They're like in double tight, double wing. Flutie's standing alone in the backfield. He just drops it and kicks it through, and everyone's like, what? What just happened? It's Belichick yeah. once again playing chess while everybody else is just trying to figure it out, just playing checkers and struggling around. He's over there. He's putting hotels and houses on Boardwalk and Park Place, and everybody's screwing around on Baltic Avenue. I've been saying it forever. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, all right, here's my controversial statement. Peyton Manning might be one of the most underrated football players. Right. When, we, I mean, when we talk about when we talk about best quarterbacks, right? He doesn't come up anymore. He doesn't come in the. I think he comes in everybody's top five. Don't you yeah. think? Does Does he come in? No, I, I guess I don't. I don't. I don't hear anyone ever argue for him at one. I don't think there's an argument at one. I don't think he's better. Well, I think I think there is some argument for one. I mean, like if we're talking about just we can, right? People are going to be. People are going to talk about Super Bowl wins, right? And if we're going to talk about Super Bowl wins, and head to head matchups, argument, right? And head to head matchups, the right? Fact that right. To... No. Yep. But you're not right. You're not playing head to head. It's not Peyton Manning versus Tom Brady, right? It's Peyton Manning versus the Patriots defense, Tom Brady versus the Colts defense. You know, right? I just, I just think that that he is even at if you put him at five or wherever you put him up there that he's still kind of underappreciated. And part of that is due to lack of Super Bowl wins. Right? I mean he had two and the second one came yeah. when he was a shell of himself. Getting blown out by the Seahawks that first that right. in Den- that Denver Super Bowl. That was tough. That was a tough one so, for him. So I think that there's some um that some of it gets lost, right? The things that he did, the things that he he revolutionized at the position. I don't. I don't disagree. Right. I mean, guys were not making all the different checks at the line of scrimmage that they do now until he came around. I'm convinced that yeah. I, I this is where I would agree with you. Like out of all the guys who played the position in the last 15 years, the only guy who I could see being like a world class offensive coordinator slash head coach or talent evaluator would be Peyton Manning. Yeah, like he he well, just so- he sees the whole game. Like he he sees it so he saw it so well, and really good. I mean, just an, a, a genius at the position. I think, I think you do need to appreciate the Manning cast too. Yeah, it's great. The Manning cast is really good. It actually makes me like Eli more because you used to think, well, Eli doesn't have any of Peyton's charisma or any of that. And he, you know, maybe he doesn't. It doesn't have all of Peyton's charisma, but I think Eli is proving on that to be just as smart. To be, you know, he sees I'll, the game I'll just be honest, as well. I think I watch. I watch probably more Manning cast than I do 
the regular broadcast. Will that change this year with Aikman and Buck? Um, uh, maybe. See, I kind of like Aikman and Buck. I do. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't hate Buck like everyone else does. I don't hate Buck at all. Um, I do think. I do think that Aikman's, you know, cowboy bias can be a little much at times. But I, I don't. I don't blame him for it. Right? Like I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I, we're, I'm not we're asking him to change. We're There's just times where I think he's in love with them a little too much. Um, I don't know how many Peyton Manning broadcasts are we getting too, right? We didn't get one every week. No, we got, we, I think what did we get like eight to ten last year, something like that. I don't think it's going to be every week again this year too. I think how, it's going to be. How about, how about, let, me, let me put it this way: the Manning cast kept me watching until the end of the game more often than anything else. Yeah, I would have checked out long before if I didn't right. have it. Right. Even even in games that were were blowouts on Monday night that I had, right, my fantasy football game was decided. I don't care about the two teams playing. What like I think the Manning cast was more likely to keep me involved than anything else. Yeah, I and, think that's true. And some of it is the the coach speak that they give and they talk about and some of it's the guests and um you know it feels more like you're watching it with a group of friends or you know um i i guess my only my only criticism of it is i wish they were in the same room i agree with that it's kind of interesting that they're in different places i understand that they probably don't want to fly them into a, a designated spot to do this and that that i think it does hurt the flow of it a little bit but yeah manning's like I, I, I think the coach that, speak right? is key. The co- the coach speak is my favorite thing for sure. He talks on this different like inside baseball level that I'm fascinated by because I'm fascinated by the language of the sport. Like, if, you're, if you're only gonna if you're only going to do it eight times out of the year, get, um, get him in I the same room, great, right? Get him in the same room, right? And I, it can't be that hard. I guess I don't know where they're living and what they're doing and what other obligations they have, but um. I think you make it worth their while then, right? Because it would be better. And then, too, you could even have some, I mean, more guests in person as well, right? I get you can't have them all there, mm-hmm. and but you might be able to get one or two in, in studio each week in addition to doing Snoop Dogg over the teleprompter or whatever. Yeah. When Snoop is in, you know, on joint number three for the, yeah, for the oh, yeah. his third is third brownie of the night or whatever it was. And, and yeah. he's just ripping on people yeah. too. <laughs> All right. We only got a few minutes left. So I will conclude with packed. that. I let me conclude with that really fast by saying yeah. if I have one game to win, it's Tom. But if I have to build a franchise from scratch, I think I want Peyton Manning. That's an interesting statement. I mean, don't do you, I mean, do you kind of see I it that way? Think- I'd have to think about that a little bit. So I bit. feel like Tom's the biggest clutch game. Like, nobody wins more big games than Tom, right? And maybe we could argue nobody lost more big games than Peyton, or maybe Brett Favre, um, or Aaron Rodgers to that to that aspect. But if you could start from, like, if I think I can get a guy who's going to give me 12 years, 15 years, not miss a lot of games. Peyton didn't really miss a lot of games. Um, and if we can get, you know, a, a guy who's got a leadership quality to him, Give me that, and I think we can turn our franchise around in two seconds. Like, if I was a coach of Detroit Lions and I could have Peyton Manning, we'd turn it around very quickly, I think. If if I was going to build the perfect quarterback, I'd take Peyton's mind, Aaron's arm, and Tom Brady's defense. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. All right. So Such a we- dick. I think I'll, I think all we've done is talk quarterbacks. Yes, yeah, so, so we can talk. So we can talk Erlocker here a little bit. Yeah. We're gonna get at least one defensive guy on the table. Hundred percent. All right. Uh, Brian Erlocker played for, you know, the rival team. Right. He he played for the Bears. He's a Packer fan. I hate the Bears. Um, he continued on that storied history of middle linebackers. Right. I yep. mean, he was in Chicago. He was the guy. He kind of fell off a little bit at the end. Yep. Um, but, you know, if you're a 34-year-old middle linebacker, I think that happens. Um, but, I mean, he was around for a lot of games that that when the Bears were beating the Packers, right? When, when they had a couple of those teams that were able to do it, because they haven't done it much in the last 20 years. 
That's right. Aaron reminded them of that last year at the games when he said, I own you. I still own you. Um, yes. Urlacher is kind of the definition of found money, right? This is why you draft late. And this is because, I mean, what was he like a fourth or fifth? He wasn't like a first round pick. This was not a highly touted guy. And he shows up and he's, you know, the second coming of Singletary and Butkus and all these guys. Like he just slid right in and became an instant game changer at that position. Uh, and immediately elevated a defense for I think was I think he was there right when Lovey Smith started, and immediately they became a, a factor with pretty average quarterbacks. Right, they make the Super Bowl with Rex Grossman and Kyle Orton, and it's because they've got guys like him. Like Erlocker comes in and immediately brings the Bears back to that tough guy, monsters of the midway. And again, it was found money. It wasn't like they drafted him thinking that's what he would be. Right. I mean, he was, he was phenomenal. Um, it kind of goes back to that. Like, what are you, what are you taking your shots at late in the, late in the draft? Um, and he didn't, I never thought he had, like, it was the most impressive physical spot, right? He wasn't the fastest guy. Wasn't the biggest guy. Wasn't the biggest guy. Um, but he was a dude. Yeah. Just an absolute stud gamer good attitude right like he showed up and he fit the city it's kind of like guys fit the spot and it was and he fit the spot at that moment that's what he's a guy who could still play too i think like if he was if he was in today's game he would still fit oh yeah in fact he'd probably fit better because you need faster you know you need speed at at, especially on the edge like they could move him now and be like like an outside linebacker with speed and he'd probably be a just a dominant force where that's where I wonder on some of those other, even even the quarterbacks, right, that we've talked about here, I don't know if maybe they can do that. Might be some truth to that. Yeah, that that's a very interesting thought. I'm a bit, yeah, Erlocker's a, a, you know, yeah, he's obviously, I think just went in the Hall of Fame, right? Like in the last two years. Um, yep. Just a, yeah, a he's recently. total stud, like total stud, great player. This is the problem the Bears have, though, is that they, they're clinging to this identity, don't, wouldn't you agree a little bit that they're sort of like clinging to this? We were really good once with a tough defense and Dick They've Buckus. They've been clinging and, to it for 40 years. And you feel like that's holding them back, don't you feel like? I feel like as a franchise, it, it's holding them back. And Urlacher almost acts as a curse because he sort of like brought that identity back and like made it a thing again when it was like, no, we maybe need to steer away from this thing and get better offensively and maybe try to draft good offensive players and... No, Urlacher makes our defense better. Defense wins championships, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He's almost like a curse. Yeah, they they couldn't. Uh, I mean, right? They were going and playing deep in playoffs with Rex Grossman. Yep, Kyle Orton. Kyle Orton. So they needed something else. And then they obviously they spent their money on Jay Cutler. They went for that. That obviously didn't pan out. But you know, I didn't think. Not that it was the worst thing in the world, but I don't. Oh, so because they never. And they never embraced Cutler. Like, they never embraced what Cutler was, which was this gunslinger far... But that's one thing I'll give Green Bay credit for, right? And, I mean, I'll give Green Bay credit for a lot of things. But the big thing I'll give them credit for is that they embraced... Holmgren embraced Favre's gunslinger and said, like, he's going to throw a bunch of picks, but I'm going to embrace this. And we're going to win and lose on this guy's arm. Chicago never did that. Like, they never gave him the opportunity to do that. I don't think. And... I just don't think they had a ton of guys around them, right? I mean, they still, to this day, like, I'm like, they, who are their wide receivers they've had over the years? Right. I mean, Brandon right? Marshall. Ber- but... Bernard Berrien. <laughs> That's a you know? Hey, I, I mean, there's not a lot there. Last two things on Chicago. Do they build a stadium outside of the city because they've bought a bunch of land at an old racetrack? Do they yep, build I that stadium? I think that's done. And then... Do they get a second NFL team? The rumor is, is, and I don't know if you've heard this rumor, and if you believe in this rumor, that maybe Shad Khan is sniffing around and saying, you know, maybe if you want to renovate Soldier Field, the Jags would be a good fit, and we could be team two in Chicago. Yeah, that would be that would be juicy. That would be um, very juicy. So be I do think, I do think that they're going to build a new stadium offsite. Right, they're going to the racetrack. I think that's true too. Yeah, they bought that land. They, the, they don't buy the racetrack unless they're already down that path. 
yeah, they're not doing what the Vikings did and bide up, you know, and bought up half of Egan to turn it into their practice facility. I don't think they're yeah. doing that. I think they want a big, awesome stadium with nice turf. And that's the problem, right? Like the with what is going on at Soldier. It's not the location. It's just the field is terrible. It's owned by the park, run by the Parks Department. It's it's hard to continue to renovate it. And I also think there's a little bit of that same thing we talked about, that tough guy mentality that they want to still play outside. They don't want to put a dome on it, whatever. So I could see them doing that. And then Chicago putting the dome on that or a roof or however they're trying to figure it out onto Soldier Field. And you have the Chicago Jaguars or something to that effect. The question here is, it's not like Jets, uh, the, the Chargers-Rams thing is weird because you brought the two transplant teams in that had roots in L.A., so that kind of made some sense. The Chargers still have no fans, but at least there were some roots there. They used to be the L.A. Chargers. I mean, there's something there. Uh, the Jets and the Giants have been there forever. There's a worry here that there wouldn't be a base for for a Jacksonville team to come into Chicago, but maybe not. Maybe there are enough disgruntled Bears fans and enough St. Louis Rams fans that are pissed off about the Rams leaving that maybe there is a base there for a second team. Yeah, I, I think you could see that. And I also would counter that with there's not a big base in Jacksonville right now either. That's true. So if you're going to roll your dice, you might as well roll the dice somewhere else new and see if it sticks. In a big city too, a team that actually, a city that could support a, could support a second team, it would be Chicago. Right. And then, and then you're probably talking about getting, you know, I guess I don't know exactly how the NFL games work, but you'd probably be able to get more games on TV all day long there, not having to worry about blackouts and, right? I'm oh, guessing yeah. you could probably, you'd probably get two games on both stations most days. 100%. I mean, so. and, and with two separate stadiums, you don't have to do the whole Jets, Giants, Every other week, somebody's got to be home. Somebody's got to be away. Same thing in L.A. has that same issue where it's, I mean, yes, you got a team there every week, and that's nice. But, boy, think about two home games in Chicago in the same week. How juicy that could be. Yeah, that could, I mean, you could talk about, like, some of those exciting things to do. Have a, what if you had a noon game for the Bears at home and a 7 o'clock game for the oh, other team. At- God, how good would that be? I mean, you'd road trip for that. If you could get tickets to both games, like you lived up here, like I don't even care who's playing. Yep. I just want to go yep. see two football games. That would be right. awesome. Yeah. That would be a long day, but it would be fun. Yeah. So there's that. That Urlacher takes us to modern Bears talk. I like that. That's All good. Right. But Let's I agree. That was good stuff. We love it. Uh, Chicago Jaguars. Sh- write it down. Write it down. Shad Khan, I know you're looking at it. Let's go. Let's... Uh, it's not working in Jacksonville. We all agree. Jacksonville is not an NFL franchise city. It's just not. I'm Duval this. Yeah, everybody loves it. Nobody cares. Come on up here. It would be great. It would be great. Come on. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about the Jaguars. Come on. Nobody does. They play half their games in London. As it is, Shad Khan's always raising his hand going, yeah, we'll go to London. It'd be refreshing. We'll go to London every year. He's... That AEW money's drying up, I'm sure. Come on now. Come on up here. I still I still would like to see a like if we're gonna play seventeen games, let's have you know let's have the seventeenth game be a neutral site game. Yeah, one neutral site right. game a week, basically. So, so you get you get a eight home games, eight road games, and then everyone's playing a neutral site game. So that could be you know, you're gonna I think we've talked about this, right? But a handful over in England, Germany, or wherever they're using, you play one in Mexico City, you know, one in Toronto, put one in Alabama. Yeah, play some and, of these college stadiums. Could yep. you imagine, like, the Bears-Packers playing at, like, South Bend? You know, yep. <laughs> Notre Dame Stadium or something like that? Something Or Ann Arbor for a Lions game, playing a 100,000-seat stadium? Be well, incredible. Once, I, once I'm commissioner, we'll get it done. You got my vote. I, I'm in 100% on this. I don't think it's a voting position, but Damn it. <laughs> well, we got to get on the. Let's call, call Ziggy, Ziggy, and uh, Mark Murphy because we can get two votes there. We can get two people to lean on it and maybe push things around for us. We need the help. All right, good job this one. I like this pack. This was a good one. Can't believe this pack is twenty years old. Jesus Christ, we're getting old. Uh, that's the podcast, everybody. Thanks for listening. Once again, please subscribe on YouTube. Tell a friend. Share it out. Have them subscribe. 
I would appreciate it if you did that. Uh, again, I really appreciate the viewership uh, the last couple weeks on the waxing pods especially. It's been nice to have people watch this thing, and it's cool. And people commenting, I really do appreciate it. Uh, continue to subscribe uh, and, and comment. Comment maybe one of your favorite players from this era. Talk about the Bears thing with us if you want to bring that up. It's all good with us. And uh, maybe Zach and I will throw something nice at you. Maybe not a brick pack. We probably won't do that. But but Or maybe we will. Who knows? We'll find a good bricked up pack and we'll throw it at you. Who knows what will happen? Tell you. See if you can catch it. The stuff, the stuff that I bought for the next pod, I bought an extra pack so we can give one away. So Can't wait. Oh, so good. And I've had people calling left and right, friends of mine going, I need all of those. Uh, one specifically who's like, I need these five WCW cards that you just opened in the last pack. So we're going to work that out. We're going to work that out and take care of you. So that's that. And uh, so that'll be it for the podcast. Thanks for listening, everybody. Once again, uh, continue to subscribe, and we appreciate it. Football podcast coming soon. More waxing on wax coming throughout the season. It's going to be great. So until next time, for Zach, this is Tim saying keep your head up, and we'll see you.